Hi, this is your host Sapna Bhartiya and welcome to another episode of TFR Newsroom. And today we have with us once again Dimitri Petrov, co-founder and CEO of Itreti AI. Dimitri, it's great to have you back on the show. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here. And today we are going to talk about Terraform Provider Iterative or TPI. Uh, it is kind of the first product on HashiCorp's Terraform technology stack. Uh, I want to talk, there are so many things to talk about, but I would like to start with, first tell us, you know, what is Terraform Provider Iterative? Uh, this is a product that helps data scientists to uh, create their infrastructure to basically uh, allocate resources for uh, machine learning. Uh, it's a special, specially designed for machine learning because it's uh, designed for spot instances, uh, spot instance recovery. For example, when you train for a long time, like uh, on spot instances, it can be terminated by by cloud provider, and Terraform provider helps you to move the job to another instance uh, and continue the training. And uh, also it helps you to terminate your instances in the right time because when you run your machine learning job, uh, for a long time, very often people just forget to terminate them and you end up with a uh, running instance for a long time. So at the end of the day, it helps uh, machine learning teams to save their resources, uh, their computational resources, their GPU instances. In addition to helping them save resources, what else? I mean, of course, you did touch upon that, but I just want to understand, you know, or to help them understand what, what are the other things that it does for them to make things easier for them? The biggest thing that we have done uh, in this project is uh, it works on top of Terraform, right? It works, it's part of Terraform provider. It's not just a, a tool that help data scientists. And that's, uh, that's a Terraform, very regular API, very regular uh, configuration file that may be many MLOps engineers and some ML engineers are familiar with. Uh, this is the biggest change uh, in the resource orchestration. Since it is uh, running on top of Terraform, I quickly want to talk about you know Terraform, or if you can also talk about you know if you look at infrastructure as code, uh, what what role is it playing in helping you know data scientists, machine uh, learning you know engineers. Uh, because it has a totally different approach than traditional IT. Yeah, uh, traditionally people just create some like library and tools to help machine learning engineers. Uh, what we are saying that yes, data uh, data scientists need the tools uh, and need uh, help with uh, resource orchestration. Uh, we just put this in a traditional stack, in a traditional uh, software development stack. This is our, what our, our company does in general. We are saying that yes, we, you need a AI platform for your machine learning engineers, for data scientists, but it does not make sense to build a separate platform outside of your development stack. The, the AI capabilities, the AI value should go from, um, should be built on top of software development stack. And Terraform provider is uh, uh, just another step to that direction. Tell us, you know, why did you choose Terraform there? Uh, Terraform is de facto standard uh, among uh, DevOps software engineers, how to how you provision resources, right? Uh, and uh, what we have done, we we just uh, created a cloud provider that helps to specific machine learning uh, use cases. It helps you to uh, with cost saving or you on your uh, uh, GPU instances or CPU instances. It helps team uh, collaborate better, uh, data science team with uh, DevOps. Uh, when DevOps ask, like, how do you provision resources? So data scientists shouldn't say, like, you know what, we have like a bunch of scripts or uh, we have some separate tool. Uh, now people can say, we use Terraform and everyone understands what it's about, right? Uh, so that's that's the goal. It's a simplification of the life of, uh, simplification of collaboration between the departments. How does TPI kind of simplifies machine learning training and help, you know, machine learning teams, it could be data scientists or data engineers, uh, to save both time and resources and money, as you already talked about, you know, resource, you know, if you pay attention to resources, it does, you know, translate into dollar amount that you're spending on it. When machine learning engineers, uh, engineers need to train their jobs, uh, their models, it usually takes a lot of time. Sometimes we're talking about like hours, sometimes days. Uh, in many cases, it includes uh, very expensive GPUs, sometimes like a few dollars per hour. Uh, you can easily end up to spending like a few thousands of dollars to train one single model just on 
computational resources, right? And with this amount of money that people spend, that a lot of opportunity for optimizations, right? I'm not talking about optimizations like uh, modeling and uh, architecture level, right? So data scientists know how to do this. I'm talking about infrastructure optimization. Very common problem that happens with almost every <laughs> data scientist in their life. Uh, you train your job and you just forget to shut down your instance. And it runs for like another hour day. Sometimes you forget it for a few days, for weekends. And uh, but those resources, this amount of resources uh, just wasted, right? And sometimes we are talking about, well, last time I had this, uh, uh, it, it happens with me, uh, not with me, but in my team, uh, we spent like $4,000 for nothing just because uh, the instance was not terminated. Uh, so it's important to include this functionality in your infrastructure. If your training is done, it should automatically shut down. So that's one straightforward feature that we have in Terraform provider. Uh, the second is uh, spot instances. When you train for a long time, let's say you need like one, two days of training for some uh, near an ad, uh, uh, people use spot instances because they're cheaper, right? At the same time, cloud provider can terminate your spot instance at random time, and you need to write your own logic how to do the recovery, like how to send the data back, how to make like a new instance, spot instance, wait for a new spot instance, and then send data back to that spot instance to continue the training. And this is what TPI does automatically. Uh, you just specify where is your data, uh, what instance you need, and it, it, it runs... Um, training on cl uh, cloud instances, spot instances, and does care of recovery automatically. And the last item, but it's uh, technically the most interesting one, actually, um, when you need to have this recovery, when you need the recovery logic, usually you need some like a manager machine that, you know, monitors your infrastructure and say, okay, that instance failed, I need to recover this. Uh, and like it's it's called like master machine right or uh, some other way like uh, uh, master node. Uh, we design Terraform provider in a way that it's not needed uh, because we use tricks from cloud like auto scaling group uh, and we use like cloud storages to uh, save intermediate uh, models checkpoints and data sets uh, changes. Uh, so you don't need to run like additional instance. So cloud will be uh, will take care of recovery of your instances automatically, but Terraform TPI just like set it up for you and uh, uh, then destroy it back when job is done. So a lot of lot of opportunity for uh, cost saving from uh, resource orchestration part, uh, and uh, TPI uh, use these opportunities and. Uh, help you sell your saving resources. In typical open source fashion, there are two aspects. One is that you go and you do all the work, you know, you update it, maintain it, manage it, secure it. At the same time, you only are interested in using a tool. You don't want to care about the the whole life cycle management of the tool. So for a lot of teams, they don't want, they just want to use the tool. So yeah, can you talk about that aspect also? Uh, so uh, uh, our uh, Terraform provider, TPI, it's open source. So you can go to the website, download it, uh, or <laughs> install and use. And it uses the same approach as Terraform itself. <clears throat> so what does it mean? It means you don't need a separate service or master node. You just like download software on your machine specify configuration, run the command, and it provision resources for you while you, you have configuration. So there are no like a managing part or third party service. You directly work with your resources. You directly manage your resources from your machine. Uh, and this is exactly how TPI works. So even for recovery logic, when uh, you, you might ask like, all right, but if my spot instance will be terminated by cloud provider, who will be recovering the spot instance? And the answer is the cloud will, because we set up cloud in a way that, okay, there is an instance, and if it fails, please recover it, right? So you can issue your command. Uh, it starts ML training. Then you can close your laptop and forget about it. <laughs> so if spot instance uh, failed, the cloud will recover spot instance, training will continue. When job is done, the instance will be like shut down 
and the job is done. So basically, like we, uh, you will get like uh, it will release all the computational resources that it uses, right? So that's where the cost chain came from. And later, when you like open your laptop and say, "Okay, update." Uh, you will get the result of your training. You will get your model with checkpoints and all the stuff. So that's the beauty of this approach. If like, it's like serverless, if you wish. <laughs> Probably not the best world, but this is a way how you can uh, organize your infrastructure without like a third-party services and um, additional uh, additional infrastructure, additional moving parts. If you can also share uh, some use cases where it is being used and of course you can or cannot name customers or who, but just give us an idea and who is using it and how they're using it. Uh, absolutely. Uh, TPI is used for uh, ML training, but uh, because of its nature, uh, its Terraform, it's, uh, it can give you like a better, more value on a close to production use cases. Uh, when you need to retrain your model on a regular base uh, and DevOps team or MLOps team organizes uh, this workflow so they can benefit this from TPI a lot. If you go like closer to development model training side, model development side, uh, it also use, uh, people use this for training. Uh, unfortunately, it was not optimized for that use cases for model training. So it, uh, Terraform pro uh, provide a reality of TPI. It's mostly about uh, productization and kind of like a closing gap between like your uh, training and uh, productization. Usually what happens uh, uh, in a big company, there are like two different a set of folks, right? Like ML engineers who like do modeling, uh, a lot of iterations, like hundreds, sometimes thousands of iterations, and then uh, models there, and it needs to uh, be like productionized. At the same time, it's not enough. You need to update model periodically. Let's say data is changing or code is changing, right? You need to have like a flow how to update your model in a regular base and put it to some production environment. And this is when uh, Terraform and this like more formal, organized DevOps approach uh, fits the best. Uh, when you can automate this uh, model retraining part uh, with, uh, yeah, with the help of uh, DevOps team, MLOps team, uh, and uh, data science team. We talked often, and uh, there are certain things that you cannot talk about at this point. But if I ask you, know, what what's next in your pipeline? What are the things that uh, you are working on? Uh, what are the problems you are trying to solve? Uh, yeah, right now uh, Terraform is mostly designed for this like productization part. I would say, right, for ML ops, for engineers, for DevOps engineers. Uh, we need to make more. Uh, we need to uh, implement more features for. Uh, ML engineers, uh, we need to support better scenario uh, when people iterate like 1,000 times in a single model. Uh, that's one big uh, step we need to take. Uh, the next step would be uh, distributed training because right now when we say, okay, we can uh, get resources for you, we are talking about like one single machine. It can be like a huge expensive GPU instance, but at the same time, it's only one machine. Uh, some teams use distributed training, uh, like four machines, uh, six, uh, six machines at the same time to train a single model. Uh, so this is, would be like the following step. Uh, Dimitri, uh, thank you so much for, for talking about TPI and also share you know, how you're helping uh, data scientists and machine learning teams. And as usual, I would love to have you back on the show. Thank you. Thank you.